There were tons of Mega Drive and Genesis games that trumped the Master System or the Game Gear version in every single way. But there are games that are worthy opponents of each other. And there are even games of where the Master System version is better than the Mega Drive version. In this video I'm going to take a look at the last two categories. And I'm not talking about graphics or sound, because the Mega Drive version is just better, but I'm talking pu purely about gameplay. For everything Sega from the 80s and the 90s, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get notifications of the new videos that I upload. Before I start, I know this video is a little bit controversial. Your nostalgic feeling will cloud your judgment just as my nostalgic feeling will cloud my judgment. The only thing I ask of you is to be intelligent and respectful about it in the comments. If not, I will delete the comments or close the comment section entirely. I want to kick off this video with the first game that I think is equally good on the Master System as on the Mega Drive. I'm talking about Fantasy Zone for the Master System and Fantasy Zone for the Mega Drive. I have the Mega Drive Mini here, it is on the Mega Drive Mini, that's how I played this version. I know the original version on the Master System. These games have a lot in common, there are some gameplay elements that are both the same on Fantasy Zone on the Master System as on the Mega Drive. Um, some melody lines are the same and some level elements are the same, but for example the boss fights are different in every game and there are levels that are on the Master System version that are not on the Mega Drive and vice versa. Fantasy Zone is an arcade port of a cutesy shooter, but in no way easy. You have different weapons to choose from which you can buy in the shop. In order to buy stuff at the shop you need to collect coins. You will get coins when you kill base stations or enemies. The quicker you kill enemies in a level, the more money you will earn. The levels in the game don't have an end, they are endless. The goal is not to reach the end of the level, but to kill all the base stations in the level. When you kill all 8 base stations, you will face the boss. The game is difficult because of the one hit deaths. Luckily, you can buy extra lives in the shop. The games do not have a lot of gameplay, but you will get enough playtime out of them because they are so difficult. I almost finished the Master System game once in the easy mode, but I got stuck at the last level where you have to defeat all the bosses of the game again. Pretty cheap to make a game difficult. On the Master System version it is useful to use the rapid fire button, but the shooting sound is bleepy and that will drive you crazy. Play it with the sound off. Luckily the Mega Drive version has an auto fire button in the options screen and it is less bleepy. I have to mention the music. Both games stand out when it comes to music. The tunes are extremely catchy and fun to listen to. Both games are amazing. There 
is a second game on the Master System, but that is pretty expensive. There is also Fantasy Zone The Maze that has a vastly different gameplay. If you want to buy a game that is unique compared to many other games on the, both systems, buy Fantasy Zone for the Mega Drive or for the Master System. The Mega Drive version is included in the Mega Drive menu. With the next one, I don't think that a lot of you agree, but it's my opinion and I'm a strong and independent thinker. I'm talking about Sonic 1 for the Mega Drive and the Master System. I like Sonic 1 for the Master System better than Sonic for the Mega Drive. That is probably because this is the first Sonic game I ever played. I bought a Master System and I wanted to have Sonic. So I bought Sonic for the Master System and I loved it. And I was Sonic fan ever since. It was only later that I bought a Mega Drive with Sonic the Hedgehog 1 for the Mega Drive. These games are vastly different in many aspects. Um, for example, the level design is completely different. Uh, the music is completely different. And there are some gameplay elements that are not in the Mega Drive version uh, and vice versa. I love the bonus level in Sonic 1 on the Master System. It's the best style of bonus level ever used in a Sonic game. I was never a fan of the racing tracks in Sonic 2 or eliminating the blue spheres in Sonic 3 or Sonic and Knuckles. The worst bonus stage ever is in Sonic CD. I never could finish one bonus stage. You might miss the loopings in Sonic for the Master System. They are simply not there. You might also miss the jumping ramps in Sonic the Hedgehog for the Mega Drive. However, the loopings are present in future Sonic games for the Master System and the Game Gear. The Master System and Game Gear versions are almost identical copies of each other. There are some large sprite issues which make the Game Gear version a little bit easier. Although the Master System is not that difficult to begin with. You can hit the balls in the first stage in the Game Gear version when he flies over your head. But you can't hit him in the Master System version for example. Sonic 1 for the Master System has one of the best music scores of every Master System game. Which is not that surprising since they were created by the same composer as the Streets of Rage games on the Mega Drive. Sonic 1 is a pretty common game for the Master System here in Europe, but pretty rare in the US due to the limited popularity of the Master System in the US. They released the European version of the game in the States. This is why the booklet is printed horizontally instead of vertically. You can recognize the US version by the barcode sticker that was pasted over the barcode of the European version. As it turns out, somehow I bought the rare US version with the sticker and was stupid enough to remove it. This decreased the value of my game tremendously. Sonic 1 for the Master System has six levels which consists of three stages. The first two are regular levels and the third one is the boss fight. The first level is Green Hill Zone, then Bridge Zone, Jungle Zone, Labyrinth Zone, Scrap Brain Zone and Sky Base Zone. And it is topped off with the final boss fight. 
One of the most striking gameplay differences between Sonic 1 for the Mega Drive and Master System is that you can't pick up the rings after you got hit by an enemy on the Master System version. This was probably done to prevent the game from exceeding the maximum sprite limit that would render screen elements invisible. Sonic 1 may be better on the Master System, but that is definitely not the case for Sonic 2. Because Sonic 2 on the Mega Drive is at least 100 times better than Sonic 2 for the Master System. It's not the first level of the game. The first level is not amazing, but it is okay. It's, it's level number 2 and the whole rest of the game. It's just purely bad level design. Extremely bad level design. The games may share the same title and are platform games with a blue hedgehog, but that is where the similarities pretty much end. The Master System version pales in comparison to the Mega Drive version. The Mega Drive version is probably one of the best games on the platform. After Sonic 1, how could you F this up, Sega? It's a real achievement, I have to applaud you for that. You had everything going for you after Sonic 1 and you effed it up, big time. For the Master System we have an extra addition to our Sonic collection and that is Sonic Chaos that is also released for the Game Gear. And Sonic Chaos is a surprisingly good game, it may be a little bit on the easy side. Sonic Chaos would have been a worthy follow-up of Sonic 1. And that is where it ends for the Sonic games on the Master System. The Game Gear, however, saw an extra release of a Sonic game called Sonic Triple Trouble, which was, well, mediocre at best, but not as bad as Sonic 2 for the Game Gear or the Master System. There were released a couple of Asterix games for the Mega Drive, Master System and Game Gear. There is Asterix for the Game Gear and the Master System, Asterix 1, which is the same game for both platforms. There's also Asterix and the Secret Mission for both platforms. There is Asterix and the Great Rescue for Mega Drive, Master System and Game Gear. And there is the Mega Drive exclusive Asterix and the Power of God. Well, most of these games are bad, but I'm talking about the Master System games. The Master System games Asterix and Asterix and the Secret Mission. And when I say Master System, I also mean Game Gear. One of the bad games for the Mega Drive is Asterix and the Great Rescue. They had the right recipe and effed up the cake. The only thing you had to do was to take the cake out of the oven when you heard the alarm clock. I'm not talking about the power of gods on the Mega Drive, which by the way was also terrible. Also bad gameplay design, right recipe, but they effed it up. Let's talk about the good games for the Master System, Asterix and Asterix and the Secret Mission. Asterix and the Secret Mission is the follow-up of Asterix. It's more of the same, which in this case isn't bad at all. It's just Asterix 1 with extra levels. Asterix is just a good platformer and to be honest one of the best platform games on the Master System. It doesn't get much better than this. If you collect for the Master System you need to own at least one, no you need to own the both. You can play with two players, one player is Obelix and the other is Asterix. And you can play each level as a character alone, so you don't have something simultaneously. Some levels are the same for Asterix and Obelix, but most of them are unique. You can play the bonus level as Edifix, the barking cleaning rag of Obelix. In the one player mode you can choose in the beginning of each level if you want to play as Asterix or Obelix. Each character has its own unique characteristics. Obelix can use a strong punch to destroy blocks. Asterix can't by default, only when you pick up a potion to make him stronger. You kill enemies as Asterix by jumping on them with your fist. You kill enemies 
as obelix by punching them or your famous ass attack. Asterix has a double jump and obelix does not. If you are familiar with the moustache plumber of the competition, you can visit the wells. When I played Asterix and the Secret Mission, I experienced some major slowdowns in the game that I never noticed before. Some enemy placements sometimes can come across as cheap. The continues, however, let you continue from the sub part of the level in which you died. That is extremely handy. The music is good and the graphics are great for a Master System game. There are proper backgrounds in the game which a lot of Master System games lack. <coughs> Chuck Rock! <coughs> Chuck Rock! The controls are great and the hit detection is spot on. Searching for a great game, Asterix and Asterix and the Secret Mission for the Master System. If I would rate these games, 9 out of 10. The melodies of the next edition in this list will get stuck in your head for at least the next 10 days. I don't think that a lot of you will agree with my next addition to this list. I'm talking about the most famous Mickey Mouse game of the 90s. I'm talking about the Castle of Illusion. This is the Mega Drive version, this is the Mass System version, and this is the Game Gear version. Both of these versions were completely different. The, Mega, the Mass System and the Game Gear version are the same. You can't go wrong with the Castle of Illusion for the Mass System and the Game Gear. It doesn't get better on the Mass System than this, unless you hate platform games. The games share the same title, but the Master System and Game Gear versions are completely different compared to the Mega Drive. The Master System and Game Gear games are almost exact copies. From now on I talk about Master System versus Mega Drive. When I say Master System I also mean Game Gear. Some level themes and melodies are borrowed between the Master System and Mega Drive version, but that's pretty much where the similarities end. The game mechanics are different. The Mega Drive version is more targeted towards surviving a level. The Master System is more about discovering secrets, picking up blocks, throwing blocks at enemies, searching a key to pass a gate, searching for an extra star to increase the amount of times you can get hit, auto scroll levels, etc. But luckily the key hunting is not done in every level and not done in a bad way. Some games can make you hunt for minutes for a key, while these Master System games are pretty self-explanatory to where you go and you will find the key within seconds. You can go multiple routes, well, within limits, in both the Master System and Mega Drive games. The Master System game is not linear in contrast to the Mega Drive game. You can choose the level you want to start. The levels on the Master System version are pretty short. The follow-up of the Castle of Illusion is Land of Illusion for both the Master System and the Game Gear. These were Master System and Game Gear exclusive and not published on the Mega Drive. Both games are more of the same of the Castle of Illusion, which is absolutely not a bad thing. What I don't like about the Land of Illusion is that you have to go back in levels to search for stuff. The games on both Mega Drive and Master System are super cute, super innocent and super sweet. However, cakes as power-up would not sit well in games nowadays. You don't have lives in the games, you have tries. And on both Mega Drive and Master System versions you can kill enemies with your anal attack. In the Mega Drive version you collect marbles you can throw and in the Master System version you can pick up blocks to throw. But you can't climb ladders when you hold an item. But don't get me wrong, the Mega Drive game isn't bad by any means. Except for the second level, the candy level. Tedious, boring and annoying are words that come to mind. 
This is why I never play Castle Evolution for the Mega Drive, because of this second level. But I do play Castle of Illusion and Land of Illusion for the Master System. If you want to pick up a Master System game, pick up Castle or Land of Illusion. Just like the Asterix games, it doesn't get much better than this. There was a third installment in the series that was called The Legend of Illusion. That was a Game Gear exclusive in Europe. I don't know in the US to be honest. Uh, but there was a Master System version in Brazil. The graphics improved, but regretfully the gameplay got worse. The Mega Drive saw the release of The World of Illusion with Mickey and Donald. It's all confusing with all the illusion. The Mega Drive game was great except for one thing. It is so incredibly easy. I was never great at video games, especially as a kid, but this game I finished in the first session when I came back from the store after buying it. Great graphics, great music, but way too easy. You can't go wrong with the castle or land of illusion for the master system. They're super common, super cheap, and if I would rate them, 10 out of 10. Did you notice that people on YouTube talk about the same games over and over again? So I made a video about Mega Drive games that nobody talks about. You can find it in the playlist right here. Also, if you know a Mega Drive game that is better or as equally as good as the Mega Drive version, let me know in the comments below.